So, we started with A. We had the last two, X, Y, Y, Z. So, with Y. We are with uh, some words, yearn and yield while yoked. Everybody say, yearn and yield while yoked. Okay. So it can be a man with a smile, or it can be a slavery and a curse. Each one of us will have a yoke, if we like it or not. You will be yoked. The question will be, by who? Because there's a yoke, there's a burden that is light, that is easy. And there's a yoke and a burden that will be like a curse that will destroy you, destroy you, destroy you. If you like it or not, there will be a yoke. God has called us to work. We are His masterpiece created to do, remember? The core verse in this whole series of 26 Sundays. We are His masterpiece. We are His workmanship. The product of His work. But the product of His work, this masterpiece, is created to work. Because in the expression of work, we find a quality relationship. Genesis 1, God worked. In the beginning, God created he worked. He created the heavens and the earth. And then God said, let there be light. And for six days he worked. And on the seventh day he rested. And you know, and from that day, in that rest, that is where we are born. In the sense that God had this dream. And from that place of rest, you need to start to work. Because when you work with him, you work from a place of rest. So rest is a concept that is found in Christ. Rest is not, I'm not doing any work now. Because there's many people, they don't do any work. There's many people, they don't have a job. They don't have a work. And it's not like they are in the rest of the Lord necessarily. It's not like it's doing them a lot of good necessarily. So if you can find yourself, and if we can have millions of people on this earth that can run to God in, to find their rest in Him, in the work that He has done, and from that place they hear from God, God, you created me to work. So it's not dependent on if there's a job or no job. It's dependent on, do I believe God has called me to work? Do I believe that God created me and I didn't go to heaven immediately when I gave my life to Christ? I'm still here on earth. Because God has a plan, God has a calling, God has something specific for me to do. And that involves work. So the only time that you don't have work is if you don't have the respect to go and sit with the one that has called you to work. That has created you to work. And hear from him, what is the good works that you have prepared for me to do? Maybe it's that tomorrow you must go out there and tell 300 people that you are precious to Christ. Oh, I'm not the evangelist. Don't go for office. Don't go for a title. You go and sit with God and ask, what is the work that you have created for me to do? Amen. Amen. But in this there will be a yearning and this yearning has to do with the desire has to do with what do you desire many times people will say i desire i dream to become a doctor or i i desire i dream to have a business that yearning to be something or to do something will determine how i will yield how i will surrender how i will give myself because if this yearning this yielding is i must make a lot of money then you will yield, you will submit, you will surrender to whatever strategy there could be to make a lot of money. And that thing will put a yoke on you. And if it's not the yoke of Christ, it will be a curse in your life, a curse in your life. Even if you have the most excellent ideas, at the end of the day, you will be ensnared, or your children, or somewhere, but the curse will work in you, or your children, or your children's children. I need to run to God. 
There's no work that you must do. If you didn't, first of all, sit, if you didn't sit at the feet of Jesus. Amen. It takes us to the first verse. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek, gentle, and lowly, humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. We leave it just there. So what does it say? All you that labor. So labor is, is good. Who must come to God? Who must go to Him? Everybody that works. Everybody that's willing to work. Everybody that labors. But in the labor, you are giving yourself, but you could feel that this labor is a little bit, it's heavy. Are you with me? Because that heavy laden is not just always because of the work. Heavy laden is because of the things going on in your head. The temptations, the stress, or the anxiety, or the fear, or the lack, or the fight with somebody. That is bringing that heaviness on you. But God said, everybody that labor heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will give you rest from your work. So that you don't have to work anymore. So I labor, there's heavy laden, there's, there's, there's budgets, there's things that need to happen, there's finances, there's exams, there's business that must work out, there's salaries, there. and I work and I work and I work, and then if everything is settled, then I have rest, and I rest from the work. Uh -uh. There's a rest because I went to Jesus. And in that rest, I have rest, that type of rest, when I'm working, I have that rest when I'm not working. But that rest, you can write down, has to do with a fulfillment, a contentment, a fulfillment, a joy, an inner, a inner peace, an inner peace with yourself and with humanity and with your life and with things around you that there's a satisfaction there's a peace with yourself a peace with God and others around you I will give you rest doesn't mean I will give you a long holiday <laughs> no that rest has is so much more so much more because you know there's people that went on holiday and then they came back messed up because they did a lot of rubbish on that holiday <sighs> May God help us to understand what is rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I will give you rest. That doesn't mean God going to take away the yoke and the burden. There will be a burden sent by God on your life. You will have a burden. You will have a yoke till the day that you die. But the one will be light and easy. And the rest will destroy you will destroy you the one will work against your destiny and against your dreams the one will be the curse from hell and demons come and can come and sit on that yoke and the other yoke will be from Christ but the word with yoke that you can write down is responsibility responsibility you will always be called to be to have responsibility and for that responsibility on earth one day before the throne of God you will have accountability you'll stand accountable for what you've done with the responsibility that God has given you responsibility is called yoke the yoke the responsibility given to you in life you are responsible to obey God that's the first thing responsible to come to him not first to come to the job there's a crisis let's say there's a crisis there's a situation out there somebody must do something and you take up the responsibility it's going to be a mess at the end of the day or maybe there will be a solution because some principles of God uh, the principle just work out there if you find if you do the right things but what am I saying First of all, you cannot jump with responsibility into the situation. Your responsibility is, first of all, come unto me. The first thing in your life, I'm running to God. I'm going to Him. 
the heavy laden, the heavy laden, the curse of labor, labor as a slavery from hell will be on me until the day I decide, before I do a work, before I do the good works God has prepared for me, before I labor, I run to Him. And I want my job from Him. So tomorrow you're going to have a job because He called you to do the job. If it's going on the street and encourage people, if it's being a CEO of a company, if it's being an engineer, if it's serving in, in a hospital, if it's teaching, whatever job you have that job for one reason because you went to jesus christ and you took what he gave you a yoke that is easy a burden that is light he gave you a responsibility to do certain work come unto me all that all of you who work and are doing this work with a lot of load and I will give you rest. I will give you a satisfaction. I will give you a contentment. I will give you a place to do it. And I will do it, like we said, yearn and yield while yoked. While you are working. While you are working, you will have rest. While you are working. While you are facing the challenges, you will have rest. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take my yoke upon you. Okay, Lord, I lay down everything at your feet and I take what you have for me. Okay, that's the principle. But it means nothing if you don't do the rest, the other side of the coin. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Let's say take, learn. Oh, you can take that helicopter that was given to you. But if you don't learn how to do the thing with a helicopter, it will be a hell of a mess and you most probably will be gone. With that what God provided for you, that helicopter, or that airplane. Five years old, so, oh, you've given this Ferrari. Oh, take the Ferrari, yes. But learn from me before you get in there and start to think you can drive. And the same with God. You want, he has something for your life. But if you're not going to learn from him, if you're not going to do it with him, of how to do life, not how to survive. That is when we go from crisis to crisis. I must work so that there's food. I must do this so that I'm okay, so that there's a home, so that this, so that that, so that my desires will be fulfilled. But if I want to do life with God, if I want to do the life that he has dreamed about for me as a dad I need to take a yoke take my yoke take my responsibility that I have for you God says and then with that responsibility God is giving you learn from me learn from me why for I'm gentle and humble in heart that gentle and humble in heart that meekness it's talking about you can write it down teachable flexible that meekness gentleness has to do with not I mean you're a softy that gentleness that meekness has to do with I'm flexible I'm open I'm teachable I don't want to call it a pathetic immature guy but the pathetic immature guy is I have this thing I want to do and I must do it and I'm going to do it and I'm taking up the responsibility and there I go and nothing can disturb when you're going to take the responsibility and you say yes I'm going with it then you better be humble you better be gentle that means you are teachable you are flexible but if you're just going to do it you're going to mess up Saul, when the enemy was there and he was waiting for Samuel the prophet to bring the offering unto the Lord before they can enter the battle. And it was seven days they had to wait. And on the seventh day he was not yet there. And so Saul took the responsibility for the sake of the nation of God not to be destroyed by the enemy. And he brought the offering himself. And just after that Samuel got there. He said, what have you done? Now you from you will be stripped the authority the responsibility the yoke that was given to you as a king and your 
children and their children will not be established. Because God wanted to do that, but it is taken from you. You want to destroy yourself and what God has for you and for your children and your grandchildren. Just take everything in your own hands. Take a yoke on you. Take a responsibility on yourself without first going to God and hear from Him. What is the good works that you have prepared for me to do? And then people ask, why? That man gave himself. You know, he did it even for the Lord and it still didn't work out because he didn't go to God first. He just went with his good idea and then he asked God to come. Come, 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 come. Come bless me. You cannot treat him in that way. Are you with me? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am meek and humble. Humble. I come with humility. You don't find identity. Oh, I'm a doctor. What are you going to become? No, you became a child of God. How are you going to serve him? How are you going to love him? Oh, as an engineer, as a doctor, as an accountant, as a teacher. That's how I'm going to love him. Are you with me? But humility will protect you. Humility will protect your heart. There's humiliation. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, every demon will have to bow, but that will be in shame, in humiliation. But there's a humility in worship, there's a humility because I love you, there's a humility because I come to you, because I relate to you, Lord, because I choose to respect you and to honor you. But I cannot honor him if I don't come with humility. choose that he will have the final say God I'm not going to take any responsibility unless you are giving it to me and you teach me <sighs> why will I be responsible if everybody is in corruption and everybody is stealing and everybody is doing this why will I not do that I mean why can I not just take also the pen and the this and the this here yeah, at the job because why because you have respect for God because you came to him and you have a yoke that is not from hell but a yoke that is from heaven. In your work, you do. You are excellent because you do it for Him. Amen. Unfortunately, when you do an excellent job, the guys that are just wara waraing and corrupt and this, they become jealous and then they will try to. Some of you experience that, because hell does not like it if you are respecting your master Jesus Christ. But go for it. Go for it. That's what God has for you. Amen. In heart. And you will find rest for your souls. You will find the rest. You will find the rest. You will find fulfillment. You will find contentment. You will find that place of contentment today, tomorrow, this week. There will be a fulfillment, a contentment. Enter the joy that your master enjoy. Who? The faithful in their job. Those who were faithful in what they had to do. God give them the right, God give them the blessing, God give them the authority to enter the joy. That what your master is enjoying, you will enjoy that. Tomorrow you will enjoy with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, if you understand this place. And that is the reward in obedience. Obedience is not, okay God you say I must do this, uh, the tithing and the offering and I must give to the poor and I must... Be thankful for what you've given me. I must rejoice in you are my provision. And then suddenly everything changed and there was just this mighty provision. And you said, yes, and now you find the joy. No, 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 no. The joy is in obeying. And just for the sake of you had the capacity, you had the grace to obey God, to do what he asked you to do. In that place there's fulfillment. In obedience there's fulfillment. In obedience there is fulfillment. No, not obedience as a trick to get something. Are you with me? That is some gambling thing. Mm -mm. You shall find rest for your souls. Okay, let's go. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So God does not say, come and learn from me and then you will have no yoke, you will have no burden. You will have a burden, you will have a yoke, but it will be a yoke and a burden from heaven or a yoke and a burden from hell. You choose, but it will be there. But nobody will say, I want a burden and a yoke from hell. Who will be so stupid? Nobody. 
But by not choosing, by not going to him, first of all, and then find from him the yoke and the burden, and then learn from him how to work with the burden, how to work under the yoke that he has given, under the responsibility that he has given to you. If I don't give it automatically, the burden, the yoke that is hard, that is heavy, will be on you. It's not sent by God, it's you choosing it. You don't put on the light. It's not like you said, I'm not going to put on the light, I, I put on darkness. It doesn't happen like that. It's automatically, darkness will have the authority. You will walk in the dark. You will be deceived, you will be misled. Whatever the enemy can bring in, whatever snake, whatever hamors, rubbish he can bring in there, he, he, he can bring it. You will not even see it because you're walking in darkness. And then you don't understand why it's heavy. Choose the light, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, next one. There we go. Let not sin therefore rile as king in your mortal short-lived perishable bodies to make you yield to its cravings and be subject to its lust and evil passions. <laughs> Short-lived perishable bodies. You can give yourself, you can give yourself to that. There's a different translation that I want to give you also. Romans 6, in the Amplified, maybe you can write down a word. Let not sin therefore Rile as king in your mortal bodies to make you yield to its cravings. Okay, there we go. Yield to its cravings. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members to sin. I yield. I, this yield has to do with surrender. I can surrender. I surrender to that authority. When you surrender to that sin, surrender to that sexual compromise, when you surrender to that pornography, when you surrender to that fear, when you surrender to that greediness, when you surrender to those lies, when you surrender to that fake, you tell that fake whatever, you, that, those lies, that demon of lies, that demon of lies, that demon of whatever, of fear. Come, you can put a yoke on me. I will work under your yoke. When you surrender to those st that stress. How? By obeying the stress. Instead of going to God and say, God, what do you say? In the midst of fear, in the midst of circumstance, in the midst of intimidation or stress, in the midst of that, I'm coming to you, Lord. Then you submit to, submit to whatever God has for you. But if not, hell will have a Bible for you. And he will tell you what will happen, what will not happen in your life. How you will work and how you will not work. What will be your attitude and what will not be your attitude. How you will speak to people. Hell will tell you how it will happen. Because you are choose to be yoked under your flesh. Yoked under what hell has for you. No, not anymore. Everybody say no, not anymore. So that yielding... Because you have a yearning, you have a desire. Let's go. Next one. Then there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one, my beloved. Listen to and yield to and obey him. Listen, yield, obey. It's all part of one thing. I'm yielding. I'm, I'm giving myself. I'm surrendering myself. And surrendering to God is... I will obey him. I will hear. I will take the time to listen. What is it that God has prepared for me to do? I will listen and I will obey. And that, together, that's a yielding unto the Lord. Are you with me? Are you with me? That was on the mountain of transfiguration with Jesus and then Moses and Elijah was there. You know Moses and Elijah, you find in the Old Testament the law and the prophets. The law, the, the foundation, the prophets, the, the future, what you see. You build accurately on foundations and you can see in the future, that's the prophets. God give you that capacity to build excellent foundations. God give you the capacity to see in the future. Yes, it will be so. 
But for what? Know that he is the Son of God, so loved by his Father. And the Father says, Obey my Son. Obey my Son. Yield yourself unto him. You with me? Next one. My soul yearns for you. My soul yearns for you. Many times you will find that in a lot of Psalms. That yearning is like, I have a longing, I have a desire. You say it till it happens, and then you say it because it's happening. If you say, I desire God, I desire His word, but your mind and your flesh say, you're talking rubbish, man. You have a desire for rubbish. <laughs> you have a desire for this. But your word and he, in his, his word in your mouth is a rudder for the ship. He ruled from his cup. No? He's taking the ship in a certain direction. That rudder is small. It doesn't have to fight against the storm, fight against and push the boat in a certain direction. It will just happen. It will just happen. With your word, you speak it till you believe it, and you speak it because you believe it. Because the word that you speak will become the faith in your heart, will become the focus of your mind and your eyes. It will become. But then choose it. And when you choose it, then there's a lot of voices saying, Nah, it's not working. Just know he's the devil starting to stress. As long as you don't believe the word, as long as you don't take time with the word, as long as you don't speak the word, as long as you don't commit to the word of God, then hell can have it a break. <laughs> because you're not going to do something really for God. They can just throw the burden, throw that the yoke and the burden will be heavy. And you'll cry out to the Lord and say, God, what must I do? What must... It's okay. As long as you don't go to him and say, God, I'm laying this down. Give me your yoke by teaching me, by showing me, by I'm being with you, being with your word, being with you. And then you learn from him how to do it with him. Amen. Are you with me? Right, next one. We yearn to be fitted out with our heavenly dwelling. What are we talking about? You look at the description and a lot of others that you can find. It's talking about you have an earthly, I said ten buona, earthly dwelling. Yeah. And this, this tent is going to go down and down and down. Hello? But we have a yearning to have, to be fitted to have the clothes that is called from Jesus Christ. And that's it. Paul says, be clothed with him. Be clothed with the truth. Be clothed with the word. Be clothed with that what is from heaven. Hell and the rubbish and the fears and the anxiety and whatever compromise you can think of want to put all the other chamors, rubbish clothes on you and tell you that's who you are. That's who you are. Have a yearning, have a desire that God will clothe you with who he is. And because of that desire, you go and read the word. You say, but I don't have a desire. You speak till you have it. You speak it forth till you have it. You commit till that it's there. For many people doing a lot of rubbish, they first made a choice. You go and sleep with a girl, or go and drink, go and get drunk, or go and smoke this, or smoke that. You made a certain choice. She made a certain choice to be so stupid, to be such a fool. You made a choice to be the fool. You made a choice to be so stupid. And hell laughs at you. You are the comedy. Demons sitting eating their popcorn while looking at you. You are the comedy. <laughs> Hello? Okay, be the comedy. Demons are enjoying you. <laughs> For what a fool you are. But not anymore. Some guys here are going to grow up. I hope everybody. Some guys going to grow up. Not going to be those stupid fools anymore. As long as hell can tell you, you're actually rubbish. And as long as you believe that, it's okay for them. But if you come to Christ and see how precious you actually are, and how he gave everything for you, then you will submit to a yoke that is not from hell. And think you are smart, that's even worse. When you do all these other things to be in with your friend, you know, <laughs> you must do the things what the friends are doing to have 
something to have some value because then your friends, hey, my buddy, hey, my buddy, we are smoking this, we're drinking this, we're talking this, we're talking the rubbish, we're talking the pornography uh, jokes, we're talking the what? Okay, do that. Be the joke from hell. Let the demons laugh at you. That's not your destiny. Come on, man. There's so much God has for you. Hell cannot touch you. The world cannot touch you. When you come to Christ and see what He has for, him, for you, have the guts to learn from Him. And you will have destiny. You will have destiny. You will be fitted out with that robes. That's royal. There will be royal robes. And when that man come in with the royal robes and they recognize that's, that, that's, a, that's a man with authority, the demons must go. You come into a place, the demons must go. Are you still here? Next one. Do not be yoked together with the unbelievers. For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. They will be my people. What are we talking? Don't be yoked together with unbelievers. It doesn't mean you must judge them. You mustn't judge the guys. Who? yeah, but you are doing this and you are doing this and that and that. And you know... When you hear truth, and something is screaming in your, in, in your head, and you need to quickly find a friend, because you feel unsafe when you hear truth, you will feel, first, first you will feel unsafe when you hear truth. But when you run to God, you will realize, I'm set free from the rubbish. The only thing that is not feeling safe is your flesh. Everything that wants to destroy the precious you, the one that is really excellent. Because when you receive Christ, excellence is living in your spirit. Excellence is living in your spirit when you receive Christ. But in your soul, you can mess up your life here on earth. Oh, you will be saved as through fire the day that you die. But on earth, you can live a foolish life. But by the truth, fruit, they will recognize you. Have the guts to respect Him. Have the guts to respect Jesus Christ. You need to become that man, that woman. Are you with me? Yoke together with unbelievers. He's, on a Sunday, I'm like this. On a Monday, I'm like that in the class. On a Friday, when there's a party, I'm like this. With these friends, I'm talking this talk. With those friends, I'm talking that talk. Because I'm What's a nice word for pathetic? I don't know. But in any case, because I don't know who I am. I'm just a wara wara. I just wara wara around. And uh, because I don't know who I am. I don't have identity. The acceptance that people give me, then, oh. And then that people, oh. Then I'm accepted, you know? As long as I always have, oh, from somebody. Everybody say, oh. Now that is the guy on a Sunday, he's like this. On a Wednesday, he's like this. On a Friday, he's like this. You know, that, that's the, oh. Remember, if you see that guy again, or maybe it's your friend sitting here. Just remember in the week, oh. <laughs> ah, no, not anymore, man. <laughs> now don't go and beat him up. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying, Why? You will not judge him. You will tell him who he is. But you will remember, you are not some scrapyard. I say, I'm not a scrapyard. You're not a, what, what's a rubbish dump? No. I'm not a rubbish dump. Well, that's how you see yourself if you don't understand you're a palace for the king. You're a temple. Temple of the living God. But in the palace, you don't throw all the rubbish all over. Unless you are, there's something wrong up here. So if you gave your life to Christ, but you're living in that everybody can speak anything to you. They can talk a lot of a lot of rubbish. They can make whatever joke and you laugh with and that. Okay. How freaky! It's a palace, but they, the guy is just making it a rubbish dump. Yes, if it's a rubbish dump, it's a rubbish dump. Then the intellect is working. <laughs> But not the other way around. Amen. You're a palace for the king, man. But you are the temple of the living God. And God said, 
I will live with them, walk among them, I will be their God. They will be my people. So you decide. You decide who you want to be. If you're a child of God, if you accepted Jesus Christ, if you must do that this morning, if you must come back to God, please, today or tonight, go to a leader, go to someone and say, pray with me. I need to receive Christ. I need to come back to Him. If you have the guts, do that. Do that. Come back to the Lord. So that we can drive out all the snakes and the hamors rubbish in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm talking to you, you guys that must go and say this to others around you. Go and have that impact. Amen. Are you with me? I will live with them. I will walk with them. I will be. Be who God has called you to be. God says, I will be your God. That means you will be my children. You will be my people. Be who God has called you to be. Oh, the flesh, all those guys out there, or your friend that you think is your friend, he will tell you who you must be. To be in, you will laugh at this joke. You will do this. You will wara wara Friday. You will smoke this, or you'll drink this, or you'll think this, whatever. Because you must be who I call you to be. What type of friend is that? That friend has some demons in his life, man. Why are you, so, you submitting to those devils? In that friend that's telling you how you must be and who you must be okay next time tell your friend I'm sorry my friend I'm not gonna submit to the demons in your life yay I wonder what he's gonna say <laughs> but don't judge him tell him but you must know you're very precious to the Lord amen I <laughs> be who you're supposed to be and then have a life with him. Have a life with him. So if you have a life with him, God said, God said, I will live with them. Live with them. If you believe God is with you, don't, don't ignore him. Don't learn how to disrespect him. Don't learn how to be arrogant. Don't learn how to be so selfish that he's with you, but you will ignore him. You walk with him. You accepted him. He's with you. Now respect his presence. Respect his presence. If he says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Ask him and he will tell you. Ask him and he will tell you what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to live your life. Are you with me? Walk among them. I will walk among them. That walk is not just we're going from here today. That walk is, I take your hand, that walk is... We are doing this together. We are doing life together. It's not, I must get a job so that I can have food and a place to live and, and have a wife and kids. No. You work because God said you must do that specific work. Do what God has called you to do. There was this lady, she had this degree in, uh, in Holland, in, in the Netherlands. And she got this job and really was this major salary but she could go to an organization ywam and uh, reach out to certain people now this is her testimony that's not what you must do you must do what god has called you to do hello but and she said god must i go and become such a missionary but there was nothing then no salary i must you must she must go and like oh i need finance no no not back but say but with faith in that people invest in her for what she will go and do for the kingdom. And, and she was with her choice and then God gave her a verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the rest will be added unto you. And she realized I must leave this major job opportunity and I must go and be, become this missionary with not five rand security nothing so out of that she just wrote a song and she wrote a song maybe two of you remember that song the rest you are from a different generation but uh, it was something like seek ye first the kingdom of god anybody know this song and his righteousness 20 from the older generation okay yes she wrote that song within like five minutes to ten minutes hello that song went through the nations in the churches 
five, uh, 10 minutes work, and she get, got for years, for years, she got more than what she would have gotten with that salary of eight hours a day work <laughs> every month, every week, every day. That's not a trick. That a, that's a God that is serious about his business. You do what God has called you to do. Where the Lord guide, there he will provide. But you have a job to do. But you go to God and you must understand. There's no excuse not to do the work that he has called you to do. You're not waiting for somebody to give you a post. You're not waiting for some other job opportunity. God has all the job opportunities that he planned for, for you from the beginning of the earth. When he planned you, when he dreamt about you and how you're going to do and, and how you could have a life, could have a quality life, could have a satisfaction in your life with him as your father. I challenge you to go and sit with him and hear through his word what he has for you. Temple, God want to walk with you, he want to live with you, he want to be with you. Let him be who he is. He's your provider. Let him be. He's your teacher. Let him be who he is. Come and see who he is. Through this word. Who's with you? Come find out. But if you don't know who you, who's with you, then <laughs> devil has the authority come to come and deceive you and a lot of other chamors will be with you. And you will walk with that rubbish. Mm -mm. You walk with that hurt, somebody hurt you, somebody disappoint you, somebody judged you in the church and you took offense and you will walk with that bitterness, walk with that unforgiveness, walk with the inferiority, walk with a, with a war in your heart and it will destroy the rest, the rest of your life. Under that yoke, you will suffocate, you will suffocate. Not anymore, in Jesus' name. We're going for a landing. Now, be not stiff-necked. As your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord and serve the Lord your God. Yield, yield. Let's say, I yearn, that's desire, I desire Him, and I yield, that's surrendering, while yoked, while I have my responsibilities of what I need to do. Are you with me? I have a desire for Him. I desire Him and I surrender to Him daily while I'm doing my responsibilities that God has given me to do. You're here. You are here. But don't be stiff-necked. You know? Everybody do this. Let's try that again. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, I need uh, two to do that still. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, a little bit shy. Okay. God will help us. Amen. That means be teachable. Be humble. Okay? Yield yourselves to the Lord and serve the Lord your God. To the one that you yield yourself, that one you will serve. To the one you yield yourself, that one will have the authority to put a yoke on you. So I yield to my own way of thinking. I yield to my personality. I yield and whatever form your personality will be put on you. I had a personality of being very shy. I couldn't speak in front of 10 people. You know, in school you do the oral. Oral, not Afrikaans, the oral organ. You do the oral, you must do, you must speak. I go to the front, I say one sentence, I go and sit and everybody look at me. There's only people like me that happened, it happened with. And I will get one out of ten or two out of ten and so what? As long as I don't have to stand in front of people. And then I gave my life to Christ and God challenged me. And I didn't like it. It was a yoke that was not easy and a burden that was not light. No, but the more I sat with him, the more God challenged me. That I must speak up. And even about singing and even about a lot of other stuff. That was in the army. So the process was not always easy. Process is not always easy. When you go to God and the yoke must be easy and the burden must be light. It's not like God going to tell you to do certain things and, ah, oh, I must do this and I must do. <laughs> the process is not necessarily going to be easy. 
Not at all. You could maybe even throw a tantrum or two or three. And you could feel, oh, no, Lord. I said it here a thousand times. And in the army, that guy said to me, you go to the gospel song group, and we were three guys singing and, and, and a bass and lead guitar and backing and a lot of speakers and everything. And then every, every day at schools, army camps, churches, and I would take my God, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. And when I see the people, the sound man said, what are you doing? There's this permanent sweat marks. I cannot get it off. I'm serious. That's what he said. Now, how many times, how many times must I say, God, I'm doing this for you. And then he said, oh, come on, man. It happened 100, 200 times that I say it and it didn't work. It didn't work. I was told... But I had to push through, push through. That's not a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light. But the process was not nice. But then just suddenly from self-consciousness, oh, technique consciousness, I must project, I must articulate, uh, 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 so that they hear the message. And from that, from technique consciousness, it went to God consciousness of, God, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? You've heard this testimony many times, some of you guys. So the process of yoke is easy, burden is light. And suddenly I could stand there and we are singing in front of thousands of, peoples, of people every week. And I could do it for God and I could sing and I could say, God, when I sing this song, where must I point? When I would remember the song, what was the song again? Good night. Anybody remember the song? And I would point out and say, God loves you so. And so it's like singing a song and I'm just asking a stupid thing. God, where must I point to when I sing a certain sentence? And it happened a few times that I would point. And when I point, God loves you so, I would be looking at somebody that's pulling a face at me. And you won't believe it. Oh, I enjoyed it so much. Well, <laughs> it would be like, you know, pulling, <sighs> and it was just that, whoop, suddenly it changed. And then, oh man, I went for it. And every time, God loves you so, and I would just go for it, I would just go for it. Not nailing the guy, but many times, by the fifth time, the guy would start crying. And you know, you have all your buddies, you know, you have the main peanut in the pocky, you know, the main baboon, the thing he's the, you know, he's doing the thing and all the others around him, <laughs> they must love <laughs> to be in with the main peanut, you know, and suddenly, and they see the main peanut, he's not doing this face, he's crying, and then they, I'm talking about what happened, and then they just look ahead, look, <laughs> oh, not by power, nor by might. But the process was not easy. The process to get rid of yourself, man. This is my personality. I cannot stand in front of people. I cannot work with people. So I'm going to study pharmaceutical studies. I'm going to have a farm. We're going to do research for alternative medicine. And this is this. But I cannot work with people. I said that a thousand times because of who I was in my personality. Fi don't be careful of your personality. Find out who you are in Christ. Let God give you a personality. After a year in the army, I came to this one worship leader. He nagged me always to sing in the band. I said, no. He looked at me and said, who are you? What have you done with Cornelius? That's my name. What have you done with him? Because God just did this. Allow God to show you who you are. The word says, your life is hidden in Christ. Your true personality, you, your true potential, your true value is hidden. That means God not just going to show it to you. You must seek Him. You must take time with Him. You must seek His presence. And you will find the excellent, excellent you in Christ. Let's say there's an excellent me in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that all? Can you believe it? Okay. Hallelujah. So I'm ending off <laughs> this thing of guys, the yoke. 
that is easy burden that is light there's a responsibility that can be easy hello but that is when you've heard from God and that is when the crisis is around you you ask God what must you do you're asking what must you do you're asking what must you do are you with me God will help you God will help you so go and do what he has called you to do and don't don't suffer under the yoke testimony that I said if I can finish off with that forgive me that the sermon was so short can you forgive me <laughs> okay so uh, I was a student and the money was not really there but the pastor is going to have a conference in Mossel Bay and they're going to have a conference but I want to lead the worship with the piano he says no there's no place in the car there's five people in the car uh, sorry I said I'm gonna hike those days you could hike don't do it today I hiked very uh, more than a hundred times I enjoyed it standing I can pray in tongues and say God divine connection please and so many people <laughs> before getting out of the car stop lead them to the Lord and then so it was sometimes I enjoyed it very much but I said I'm gonna hike there to Mossel Bay on the road hiking there got there led the worship in the conference and afterwards they said no no they're gonna not allow me to hike back they're gonna give me money to be get on a bus and go back but before I came I had a certain amount of clothes I, I worked with some guys that stole everything uh, that stole everything and I had like two pens and uh, oh, whatever whatever but it became like what's the nice word pornographic or oh, I don't know what but it got torn in, in in ways that it was not supposed to be torn so I could not use those clothes anymore so I had only money for rent that I must pay otherwise they're gonna throw me out of the place where I stay and I said God I must I will just by faith I will have to buy clothes I cannot go like this and lead the worship in the conference so I bought me myself clothes but there's no when I go back most probably they're gonna throw me out okay did the conference they didn't give me anything they just gave me a bus ticket oh and uh I got on the bus and when I got on the bus God said to me go and speak to that guy there at the back I said God I'm hungry this auntie gave me some hamburger something I'm just gonna eat this first and I opened the hamburger and the auntie you must do that auntie wrote me a small letter thing whatever card said, when the Lord speak to you do it immediately I lost my appetite <laughs> close the hamburger put it there I went now come on you guys you know how you walk down the bus and you tell the guy I just move up I want to sit next to you I want to speak to you oh that's a little bit uncomfortable that's a little bit freaky man so I had to do that sat next to him he was black belt karate and I don't know what 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 long story in the end he gave his life to Christ and I led him to the Lord great and as I want to walk back God said speak to that man that guy is on his way to make a wrong decision okay across good day I'm Cornelius God just told me you're on your way to make a wrong decision and God says you you must not do that he started to cry he's a Christian he's engaged to a lady that's also a Christian but her parents are not Christians and they said no this marriage will not happen you will not marry a Christian but the Christian God spoke to his son he wanted to speak to his son and said I have prepared that lady for you she's serving me and you are serving me I'm the father that is saying yes to this marriage but he was on his way to break it up and God just supernaturally intervened Wow man go with God go with God even though I was tired at that moment I mean at that stage I had such a lot of energy and when it was finished he gave me a paper he said don't open it open it when you get out of the bus in Bluefontein okay went back came to Bluefontein got out opened the paper 
said, you heard my need from God, I heard your need from God. 350 rand, exactly the amount I need to pay for my rent. How does that happen? <laughs> That's only God. That's only God. Now don't go around now and just give words and wait for the money. Ah, uh -uh. <laughs> No, I saw that thought. No, 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 that's not, that was not what I was saying. I was saying focus on God. Go to Him. Do what He tells you. Amen. God will be there. God will be there. Please. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, you're an awesome God. God, and so many times you challenge us. For a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light. But Lord, the process is not always easy. Forgive us for quitting on the process many times. But God, help us to, to enter into the place where you are. And even if you give us discipline and push us into certain things, give us the mercy, the grace, how to stay so that our yearning, our desire will be for you. Our yielding, our surrender will be unto you. But it will all happen while we take up our responsibility with the yoke that you are giving us, Lord. For the work that you have for every man, every woman in this place. I pray, I pray that they will so spend time with you, God, to understand why are they still here on earth. Why are they still here on earth? Help them to go and find out from you, Lord. And that they will do the good works that you have prepared for them to do. But while they're taking up their responsibility, that they will always, always be dependent on you. Always, always have a focus on you to see more of you and less of their own good ideas. Help us, Lord. We trust you for that in Jesus' name. And while every eye closed, head bowed, if you are here and you know you need to come back to God, you must have the guts to come back to Him. I just want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you while every eye is closed. I see, see the hand, see the hand, see the hand.